All right, it's Dan York, and welcome to another episode of Emerging Tech Talk. I'm here with Cullen Jennings at uh, IT Expo in Miami. So, uh, welcome, Cullen. Hey, thanks, Dan. Good to be here with you. Yeah, so uh, I know you from the ITF and other things, but uh, could you give people a quick snapshot of who you are, what you do? So, I do do a lot of uh, IETF work for Cisco. In fact, I was the uh, Rye Area Co Director for a long time that deals with the standards around um, communications, both presence, IAM, SIP, those types of things. And that's really more what I do in my job at Cisco. I'm in charge of a lot of our technical strategy um, around what we're going to do with communications from a very broad sense, ranging from WebEx over to our video stuff, over to our um, enterprise voice work. So, it's a pretty fun job. I get to work on all kinds of different things, know a little bit about everything. And you have the, uh, the uh, email address of Fluffy. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great email address. <laughs> Seldom forgotten. <laughs> That's true. Fluffy at Cisco Town. We, we can get to you. So you were here talking uh, at uh, the VI, or VI Peering Forum as part of IT Expo around Viper and, and this way of validating phone numbers over the, uh, over the PSTN and IP. And what's the, what's the end goal here? What are you trying to solve? Okay, so the end goal is today, you know, we got a bunch of enterprise customers, um, and there are you, me, we both have, you know, video phones, IP phones, all kinds of things with all kinds of great features. And yet, when I phone you and you're at a different company than me, I don't get them. I get all these kinds of features when I phone the guy down the hallway from me, but he's the last guy I care about getting video with. I want to get video across with people at other companies or people who are far away. So really the whole goal of this is how do we get the type of end-to-end -end features that we can have on the internet working when I dial your phone number. Okay, so how, how does it work then? I mean, how do you do it? Well, there's, you know, there's quite a few steps and it sounds a little bit complicated, but let me, let me hit the, the, the basics of it. It's a pretty simple idea when you get it through your head, which is today on the PSTN, when I dial your number, it generally reaches you. Sure. And that's, you know, that, that, that works quite reliably. And the instant that we've done that, we have some sort of shared secret information with each other. We both know when I called you at what time the call started, what time the call stopped. By Other, we, you mean our phones do. Or, our or phones do, or and, and our PBXs in your enterprise and mine do. And other PBXs that might be attacking us on the internet don't do that. So the basic idea of how this works is you take your phone number and you publish them into a distributed hash table on the internet. I'll just say a little bit more about this in a second, but just think about it as a database in the internet for a sure. second. Okay? And when I go to phone you, um, I go and look up your phone number that I just dialed on my phone and I look it up and say, hey, this phone number is claimed to be owned by a PBX over in Dan's company and uh, you know it claims I can contact it directly over the internet. Now, I don't have any reason to believe that information. Anyone could have put it there. In fact, sure. a bunch of people might have put things. So what I do is I phone you over the PSTN and I use this shared secret information we get at the start and stop time of that call to use that to validate that you actually are, that your PBX is the PBX that's responsible for that number. So after that first call ends, we do a little proof of possession of keying material, you know, sort of crypto magic over the internet, and both PBXs validate that they know about the same phone call. That's the first call. Now the second call that I phone you, now I've cached that I've discovered a route over the internet to reach you. And I'll just make a SIP call to you over the internet, and we'll get you directly, and I'll get all the types of features that, the, um, that we can negotiate over SIP. Video, audio, whatever your endpoint, my endpoint, both support in common, we'll get that working. So the first time we do it, we, it, it's just a regular old PSTN call. So you and I are just talking regularly, but in the background, our phones or PBXs are doing a little uh, you know, handshake to say, hey, this is, this is really Dan and this is really Cullen. Right, and they, they do this little um, validation exchange. Yeah. exchange. And they're using this distributed hash table. And people ask, well, who runs the distributed hash table? It's database in the sky. Well, it's a peer-to-peer -peer hash table. Um, it uses peer-to-peer -peer technology. And it doesn't really live anywhere. Everybody's PBX that participates in this hosts a little teeny bit of it. And there is no single provider. So the advantage of this is we don't end up relying on some third party right. to help validators call. And we don't pay some third party that's got to pay for their servers or anything. It's just you and I. We both deploy this in our... Um, off, you know, in our PBXs, and we're good to go. We can directly phone each other, and we don't need any third parties. And that's that's the real advantage of it from a deployment point of view. A lot of the other proposals for this relied on somebody else doing something that they had no business incentive to do. Here, there's a complete business incentive for both you and I to deploy this. We're going to eliminate the long distance costs of the call. We're going to get video. We're going to get audio. And we're going to get new features as they come out in both of our phones. Now, for this to work, though, you've got to have all the endpoints or PBXs that are that are using this, right? 
customers. Sure. And that's going to be a slow sort of transition as PBXs do it. And you can add it to a PBX, you can do it directly in a phone, you could add it to an SBC, or even just a routing box that sat in front of your PBXs. There's lots of deployment models. But somehow, both of us have to change something at both of our ends. And the fact that we both have to change something in our enterprises before this all works means this is, you know, takes time to deploy. Yeah, now now this is uh, the DHT, the, the distributed hash table, the database up in the cloud. You know, you're right not to trust it because if anybody can stuff information into it, you know, do you have to authenticate to join the DHT or anything, or, or could anybody just start stuffing data into it? So what we do is we try and rate limit what attacks can be made on it and limit how much people can put into it and the expense of doing that. So it does use um, certificates to validate it. Um, right now we're using certificates from a company called GoDaddy that's issuing all the certificates for this. Really? Um, oh, they've been a great, great uh, partner to work with. They've done a, a lot huh. of good work to make this all go. Quite excellent security there. And so working with them, um, they don't validate that they don't give a certificate to an attacker. We do give a certificate to an attacker. Okay. But that certificate only allows you to store and spam so much into the DHT. And they'll rate limit how many you need. So we've sort of designed it around the assumption that somebody wouldn't be able to easily get a million certificates. And that if they can't get a million certificates, they can't really damage the system. So it's, it's all a sort of risk mitigation effect on down and sort of limiting how much impact someone can have in the DHT and designing the system to be very robust so you can have lots of attackers and lots of people pushing bad data in the DHT, but still have it be secure. So I think I know the answer to the next question I'm going to ask you, but, but so somebody goes in and he puts in 100 records that say they're Dan York, mm -hmm. and they're asserting that they, that they own my phone number. How does the system go and make sure that you can actually connect to me over IP on the, on the right address? So what happens is at the stage where I dial your phone number and look up, um, in the DHT, I'll find all those hundred false records plus the one valid record. And I have no clue which one's good and which one's bad. I just found 101 records. And then when I phone you and we start, and the, the call ends, and then both of our PBX start this validation dance to see who owns that number. Uh -huh. Only your PBX will contact back sure. to me and validate the whole thing. Okay. So it really doesn't matter how much bad data we get in the DHT within certain limits. Right. Um, and we'll still validate with the correct people. Interesting. And I know you said in your talk there's also a, a fallback capability if the if the VoIP call didn't work, you know, the second time or third time that you were there, you know. Sure, or, or maybe you're just having a bad internet connection or you're right. I'm on the Wi Fi here. Or Wi Fi <laughs> or whatever. There's many reasons why there might be concerns about the quas over the internet. And this is a little bit different than the routing problem, but we monitor the quas. And what we do is we're in real time while you're talking will fail the call back to the PSTN. Now, there's more than a click when that happens, about a third of a second or so, right. but it's not long enough for you to go, hello, hello, are you still there, and then hang up, right? It's a short period of time. You'll notice an artifact, but you won't lose the call. Now, this is obviously work Cisco's doing, but how, do, how are you broadening it beyond Cisco? I mean, for this to work, it's got to be an industry thing, really. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's sort of fun to be able to phone everyone that has a Cisco phone, but it's a lot more fun to be able to phone everyone who has a phone. In fact, you don't even want to know what type of phone somebody has. Right. You just want to phone them and have it work, right? So we've been really trying to get um, the whole industry as a whole to adopt this and move into it and other, work with other vendors to do that. And part of doing that is we've taken this to the ITF and we're working on it um, as a standards there. We've proposed a working group around it. We're working with some other companies to help drive the standard forward and adopt it and change. And we know it will change as uh, we work with other companies on this, but we think that we can work with people and through the standards process get to something that benefits everyone. Now, if you're relying on the PSTN, I mean, but you're replacing it with IP communication, at some point the question comes in is what's the relevance of the PSTN? I mean, do you see this as, as an end game or just kind of a temporary step along the path toward pure IP com communication? This is a step that helps us along the way. I mean, clearly this relies on the PSTN to validate, and if the PSTN didn't exist anymore, this system would no longer exist. But we think that the PSTN is going to be around for a long yeah. time for all kinds of reasons. I mean, dealing with emergency calls, yeah. a lot of things. So, no, we certainly wouldn't argue that this is an end game. Um, you know, I, I've heard people have described this, this is a hack to avoid to, to you know, use the PSTN to correctly route with things. It seems like an accurate yep. description. And um, we can use this in that time zone. Over the long term, there will be better techniques for allowing users to assert the identifiers that they own go to them. Cool. Now, so where can people learn more? So, best thing to go do is there's a bunch of drafts at IETF. Um, they are all... Um, have v Viper, V-I-P-R, in the draft name of them. You can Google for them. 
um, or drop me an email, fluffy at cisco.com. All right, and I'll put the links in the show notes too. Thanks. I've been talking to Cullen Jennings from Cisco Systems about Viper. Thanks, Dan.